Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video I actually wanted to teach you a little bit more of Python, the amazing uh, programming language that might actually change your life completely because it's such a powerful language. But today we're actually going to do something really cool. We're going to go to a bunch of NASA websites, and we're going to try to use some of the data that NASA provides for us to actually analyze it and to learn how to do um, basically stellar and exoplanetary data analysis. Anyway, let's learn about this and welcome to What the Math. So what you see right here is actually a simulation from NASA of what it's like on TRAPPIST-1D. There's some hypothetical water here, there's some uh, planets in the vicinity and the star itself. But we're not here to do this. We're actually are talking about exoplanets, but not specifically about TRAPPIST-1. Uh, this is actually from the website right here that has uh, all of the confirmed discoveries that NASA has made with Kepler telescope and other telescopes that you can kind of discover on exoplanets.nasa.gov. But there's another website that has a lot less, um, I guess, pretty things, but a lot more scientific and mathematical things. This is a website known as NASA Exoplanet Archive. I've used this several times before, if you watched some of the previous videos. And uh, this is an amazing, amazing website that basically collects all of the data of all of the exoplanets, confirmed and unconfirmed, that we've discovered since, like, forever. As there's currently there's uh, four and a half thousand candidates and three and a half thousand confirmed planets. If you click on this button, it takes you to this really, really, really complex looking table with like thousands of planets and several columns with various data. Now, what I'm going to teach you today is going to be a relatively simple uh, way of analyzing data using spreadsheets. And so for this reason, we're actually going to go in here. You don't really have to do this. Uh, if you if you know Python well enough, you can probably access this directly from the web, but we're going to go with the easy route first. We're going to save it as CSV format. So basically, we're saving this table in CSV format, and CSV stands for comma separated values. Basically, it's going to download everything for us as uh, separated by comma. Um, but we also don't want to download everything. I'm actually going to go in here, select columns, and remove most of these except for things like mass, uh, distance. I'm also going to remove these here because we don't really need them. Uh, I guess maybe temperature as well, or let's let's keep the temperature. Uh, stellar mass we're going to keep and stellar radius we're going to remove. So this will make this a much, much lighter file when you download it. So here we're going to click on update selection and go into the download, choose to download only, check columns and download all of the rows and with no errors or limits and click on download and there is your planet csv file right here if i decide to open it up you basically get an excel like file here with several columns with uh basically three and a half thousand lines of data now this is where the data analysis part comes in so if you don't know what data analysis represents it's basically one of the most useful fields right now so if you're still choosing your career consider going into data analysis it's um, not very difficult, but it is very, very useful. Basically, you learn how to analyze all of these thousands and millions values. So here's what we're going to do. First of all, we're going to open a Jupyter Notebook. This is actually from Anaconda, which um, I showed you how to install in one of the previous videos. We're going to upload Planet CSV into the same folder just to make things a little bit easier. And now we're going to go into exoplanetary analysis, that, which is basically the new file I just opened up. Now, here's where things get uh, more programmable, more uh, slightly more complex. I'm going to show you where to actually go to learn more about this first, and then I'll show you some of the examples that you can use yourself. But there is a really, really cool um, package or a library for Python known as Seaborn. This is what Seaborn uh, statistical data visualization looks like. It's an amazing, amazing pack package. It actually has a lot of really cool examples and um, here, if you go into the gallery, it kind of shows you the power of uh, Seaborn. It can create a lot of really cool visual graphs. Uh, the ones that I'm actually usually impressed with are the heat map graphs that you can use for things like correlation. There's also regression graphs. Um, but what we are going to be graphing is something like this, a box plot. As a matter of fact, if I click on it right now, 
it gives me an example uh, with exoplanets, but using a much, much smaller data set. And so here you can actually see various methods of discovery of exoplanets and the number of um, those exoplanets discovered uh, as opposed to distance in uh, light years from like one light year to about 10,000 light years. And it gives you the code here on the bottom, but we're going to change it a little bit. But first of all, let's actually copy it into the uh, Jupyter Notebook. I'm going to explain to you line by line. The first three lines import various libraries that we need for this. NumPy, um, if you don't know what that is, it's basically a way to analyze uh, big data sets, specifically lists, and to manipulate them using various mathematical symbols. Seaborn is the library I just showed you, and matplotlib is a, a library that allows you to graph anything in Python. We're then basically using... Now this particular line we don't really need because it's just a style, so we can technically remove it, but I'm going to keep it here for now. This line here creates um, subplots, which basically are plots of a specific size. And uh, so here, I believe it actually creates two subplots, even though it might actually be only plotting one. And it uh, actually sets the x axis in logarithmic scale. This means that it increases by multiplying it by 10 every time. In other words, if you were to actually look at the x axis again, you'll see that it's multiplied by 10 every time. This is what we refer to as logarithmic scale. Uh, the other way of doing this is by typing linear to create a more comfortable graph we might be used to, but here it's just going to be so difficult to read because the distances here are like from 4 light years away to uh, 10,000 light years away, so it's going to be a lot more difficult to visualize. So for now we're just going to keep it as uh, log x scale. Then this is where we load our data set, and here it's actually using the uh, preloaded data set for planets. This is the one that it already has inside, but we're going to use our own. And then it uses a command called boxplot to graph these boxes that you see right here. And lastly, it uses another command called swarmplot to graph these uh, dots everywhere. These are also known as swarms in this particular library. And what it does is it sets x axis as distance and y axis as method. This is from the list of things that it already has inside. And the last uh, two commands here are basically uh, to create a grid, to create a label, and to then graph it. Uh, so, we're going to change this just a little bit, because first of all, I actually want to be able to read my file I just downloaded. So for this, we're going to um, create a, a new variable called planets, and here we're going to use another library called pandas. This allows us to read various... Uh, data files, and in this case, a CSV file that we just downloaded called Planet CSV. This is from the website that I showed you earlier, known as NASA Exoplanet Archive. And the file we just opened up is that file we downloaded. So this is how to open it. And here, this part dictates that all of the values are separated by a comma. For some CSV files, sometimes it's a semicolon. So basically, you would have to replace it with this. But for us, it is a comma. And we're going to keep the style again, create a subplot. Uh, I'm also going to maybe just for fun, keep this part as a logarithmic um, x axis. And we're going to remove the part about planets completely. We don't need it anymore. And we're also are just going to replace some of the values here. So uh, as you can see, I've already replaced this part a little bit. It's actually, it looks a little bit different because I was experimenting with different types of data just to see what it looks like. But for now, let's actually open up the file again just to see what to enter into X and Y values. So if you look inside of the CSV file you downloaded, you'll notice that every column has a name on top. And this is what we actually are entering in those um, strings inside of uh, that particular command. So, for example, if you want to try to visualize, uh, let's just say, the discovery method, which is pl underscore disk, disk method, um, which is right here, which unfortunately you don't see because I didn't uh, resize it, so here it is, uh, and compare it to, let's just say, um, planetary mass, we can do that by entering both of them right here. So uh, the 
oh no, the disk method is going to be our, yeah, our Y value. So we're going to place it on the Y axis. And this is going to be for both of these uh, graphs. And then for the X axis, we can choose something a little bit different. So let's just go with, let's start with the star mass first. Uh, and we're going to graph it just to see what it actually looks like if you were to visualize uh, this particular graph. So as soon as I run it, it will probably take a few seconds for it to load. And and once you wait a few seconds, you'll get this. And here's our first graph. So basically, let me just actually make it a little bit bigger just so you can actually see it. So here is the graph for the type of discovery. And this is various discovery methods for exoplanets. And on the bottom here, um, we have the mass of a star. So basically what you can see from this is that for more or less uh, massive stars, we, don't, we didn't really find that many planets, but for stars between about half and two masses of our own sun, we found quite a lot of various exoplanets. Now let's change this a little bit, see what else we can discover. And this is actually where it gets really interesting. You can start looking for various patterns. So for example, Let's look at the relationship between um, the mass of the star and also maybe in the number of planets around those stars. So, you know, what, is there any relationship in terms of discoveries? So if you switch uh, X and Y values, making the star mass the Y value and the planetary number the X value, you get this. Looks a little bit better. Uh, not Still not as good as maybe I was hoping for, but good enough. So here you can see the number of planets around those stars and the mass of said stars. So for the vast majority of uh, stars that are approximately 0.5 to 1.5 masses of our sun, you get all sorts of uh, planetary numbers. Whereas for larger stars, you usually get one or two. And for smaller stars, it seems that we, don't, we haven't really found that many, but this is where TRAPPIST-1 is with its seven planets. And so this is where it gets really interesting because you can actually use uh, pretty much any of these columns. So you can use things like orbital um, period, which is how many days it takes for a planet to orbit around the star. You can uh, do the, I believe this is the distance to the star. You can use planetary mass and uh, distance to uh, that particular star from our um, solar system and try to compare and analyze them using this relatively simple script that you can find online and also in this video, or that is in the description of this video. And so just for fun, let's actually look at a, uh, a relationship between the discovery method and also the mass of a planet uh, compared to Jupiter. In other words, how many exoplanets by mass did we discover by certain uh, or various methods? And here we're actually going to change the x-axis to be logarithmic again, just to make it slightly better looking and scroll down to the graph and look at that. So you can kind of see that uh, there are very, very few planets uh, that by mass at least that were discovered using pulsar method. And the vast majority of um, large planets were discovered using radial velocity. And then transit method kind of we, uh, yields quite a lot of various types of uh, planets because we're just literally looking at the star and trying to see if something passes in front of it. Yet the methods that require a lot more precision are better or worse at yielding either big or small planets. And in this case, uh, this particular method, pulsar timing, indicates that we actually discovered the smallest by mass planet so far. And this is actually uh, mentioned in one of the videos I've made previously. Well, anyway, so that's kind of all I wanted to show you in this video. I wanted to basically teach you how to analyze data using Python, specifically data that's available from NASA, where you can kind of even go into more detail and analyze pretty much any type of exoplanetary data. And specifically here, it's actually kind of fun to see patterns or to even discover things that maybe even NASA hasn't discovered yet. So if you do discover something using this code and using the website that I showed you from NASA Exoplanet Archive, do post it in the comments below because this is maybe, just maybe something that NASA hasn't really figured out yet. And by the way, yes, there is a planet code 24 sex. Ha 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 ha. Laugh it up. And anyway, thank you so much for watching guys. And the code for this is in the description below. 
Subscribe if you still haven't, share this video with someone who enjoys learning through space, video games, and also wants to learn coding, and see you in the next video tomorrow. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.